Within a couple of years of the introduction of Wi-Fi, and in particular the 802.11 1999 revision of Wi-Fi, two things happened. Firstly, Wi-Fi took off. Many people loved being able to browse the web, do email and other network-related activities while on the move. So they could bring their laptop around and remain connected, and it was a huge success. But the second thing that happened was a growing realization, first among security experts and then even the general public, that the security of Wi-Fi was not quite up to the mark. It was lacking in a number of ways. It had originally been meant to be wired equivalent privacy, but it was not even that. Worse still, exploits were being published to allow attackers to break WEP. Something had to be done, and IEEE got started working on 802.11i, an amendment to 802.11 that would introduce much enhanced security. The Wi-Fi Alliance, meanwhile, realized that this was a big threat to the continued growth of the Wi-Fi market. What was to be done? They introduced WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access, as a stopgap measure. It was something that was designed to be stronger than WEP, but not quite all the way to 802.11i. Therefore, as the name implies, TKIP. TKIP is one of the parts of WPA. It's Temporary Key Integrity Protocol because WEP was well known to have poor key usage, as we have already seen in earlier videos. So one of the main features of WPA to address weaknesses in WEP was the introduction of TKIP, Temporary Key Integrity Protocol, which would immediately address some of the main problems with WEP. It was temporary, it was a stopgap measure, better than WEP, but not as good as using AES, which comes with 802.11i. In fact, it still uses RC4, but at least fixes some of the most serious problems with the way that keys were used in WEP. There were two main concerns, actually. One was the weakness of WEP, and the second main concern was that there was a lot of hardware that was out there that could not handle stronger but more computationally intensive cryptographic protocols like AES. Given these two concerns then, certain compromises had to be made, and so TKIP was one of these compromises. At least it fixed the major problems with the usage of keys. And at the same time, it was something that could be handled by the existing hardware that was out there. So we no longer appended the IV with the master key to form a per packet key. Instead, there was a per packet key mixing algorithm. This is one of the, the three main improvements of WPA, the use of TKIP. A second improvement is an improvement as far as message integrity was concerned because WEP, as we noted earlier, has a very weak linear 32-bit CRC that it uses for its integrity check value. So Michael was introduced. Michael is, is a message integrity code algorithm with no multiplications. No multiplications means it's easier to compute and it could still work on less powerful hardware. A third improvement introduced in WPA is replay protection. That was not something that WEP could do. So with WPA, we see that there is a sequence counter which helps in that aspect. So here is a block diagram of WPA. We see TSC, which is the TKIP sequence counter that helps with replay protection. 
And now going back to talk about uh, TKIP as far as improving the key usage, we see phase one key mixing with the transmitter address and a transcend key. So the use of transcend key is another improvement over WEP. So instead of using the key directly, the master key is used to generate the transcend key, and then it's mixed with the transmitter address. So we're having every pair of station and access point using different keys and also the keys are changing every frame. So more powerful key mixing that helps to make the encryption harder to break, even though it's still using WP encapsulation, meaning it's still using RC4. And then as far as uh, the integrity protection is concerned, there's the use of Michael here. <laughs> 